Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. I hope you had a great day. Today we are looking at some more r slash I do work here lady stories. If you would like to help the channel, please smash a like button. It's really important for the channel. And with that out of the way, let's begin with the first story. It's called I just want to do my job. I'm a party host at my place of work, which happens to be attached to a bar. Both businesses are owned by the same man and work hand in hand. I've been an employee on my half for a little over a year now, yet I'd never made a run down to the bar before. Until yesterday. I'm 18, but I've been mistaken for 13 numerous times. Regardless, I'm far too young to be set in a bar. For the party I was working though, I had to make runnels to the bar to get the food for my party. So I head down and grab some of the food from the kitchen and start taking it over. I had delivered maybe half the food when, on my way back to the kitchen, I hear a lady yell something. I'm a bit on the skittish side, so if someone yells, I'm right there in headlights. I turn and see the bartender pointing at me and she calls me over. I toddle towards her like an apprehensive squirrel. She grabs my arm and tells me I have to leave while she drags me to the door. I was stunned, but I still had the sense to dig my heels in and nearly drag her down. Once she recovered from suddenly holding 95 pounds of dead weight, she once again tells me I have to leave. I ask why, a very reasonable question. But she looks at me like, is it really the story you're going with? There's no way in hell you are 21 and I'm not having a kid in here while I'm working the bar. At this point, I've reached my tipping point. I'm pretty easily overwhelmed and honestly, it was a miracle I lasted that long. I start crying, my words are strained and garbled by sharp breaths and little sobs. I'm stuttering to the point where I might have well been speaking Morse code when I finally managed to choke out, I'm just trying to do my job. I don't know how much of that sentence was actually intangible when I said it, enough I suppose. She looked at me with eyes of pure oh crap. Her talon grip loosened and for the first time she noticed what I was wearing. A blue shirt with my works logo stuff written in big block letters on the back and a name tag with the name of my work on it. Unlike some stories, this had a pretty okay ending. The second she realized her mistake, not only did she apologize profusely, but she helped calm me down from the hysterics I'd thrown myself into. Afterward, she was very nice and quick to help me. If my hands were full and I couldn't get the door open, she would say things like, one sec baby girl, I get the door for you. The whole rest of the night, if I needed anything at all, or even just look like I did, she was there asking, what do you need baby girl? The next story is called, you want to talk to the manager? I work at a place that does nighttime events during the weekends where we sell beer and have food. It's not a restaurant, all outdoor. We are family friendly and due to the type of licensing we have, we are only allowed to sell beer and no other alcohol. At the time, my job was to walk around to make sure that nobody was sneaking in outside drinks. Occasionally, we will get secret shoppers making sure that we are following codes. One night, while making my rounds, I spotted a group with clear plastic cups and a bottle of wine that we don't serve. I politely inform them that they need to dump their cups and put the bottle away and I will not make them leave as long as I don't see it again. They responded by saying that the bartender sold them the bottle of wine. I informed them that this would not happen because if wine were to be sold we would cease to be family friendly and not be able to allow children to come in and be part of our neighborhood events. After I say this they admit that they brought it and that they are good friends with the owner and he said it was okay to do, they have done it before and that I can ask any worker that was around that they were allowed. I realized that they thought I was just another patron because we don't have any uniforms or name tags. So I tell them that I'm an employee and have been given the authority to kick people who aren't complying with our rules out and hand them a ban as well. And that I was going to get the friend, the owner, over to explain further if they misunderstood. They made me annoyed because they tried to get away with it and possibly get us shut down, so I dropped the leniency and had them leave. The next day I was on my shift in the morning for my normal duties when one of the group members arrives. He sees me working and rudely asks for my manager and tells me that he's going to get his band lifted. 
I'm a manager, though of a different section of the business, but still with some authority over these matters, and I tell him so. He drops his smirk and says he'd like to talk to the owner then. So I suggest that he calls him since they are such close friends. He stormed off in a huff and has not returned since. The third story is called You Need the Engineer? I work as an engineer for a company that manufactures large concrete structures. Most of our projects are supply only. This means we fabricate the structures and the prime contractor does all of the installations. But we still send a representative and a veteran crew member to work out any kinks. This is the first large scale project that I have been the design engineer on. And while I'm not a licensed structural engineer, just a civil PE and did not stamp the drawings, I did conduct all of the structural calculations and overall design. It is also important to note that the name I go by is my middle name, but for my license and business card I have to go with my legal name. As this was my first large design, I requested to be the on-site representative for its installation. From the first day I was on-site, I had issues with the site supervisor. I'm 25 years old, and whenever I raise questions or pointed out issues, the supervisor would refuse to respond to me. He would rather explain it to a veteran crew member who is in his mid-40s. Or the supervisor would refuse to make a correction, until my coworker expressed his concerns as well. This was frustrating, but since my coworker is much more experienced than me when it comes to the actual installation and the changes were being made, I let it slide. As I said, this was a supply only project. Because of this, we were only responsible for supplying what was expressly laid out in our contract. One thing that was expressly left out of our contract was the hardware to connect the new construction to the existing, even though the connection was designed by us. The day of the incident was the day we were set to connect the new construction to the existing. As it turns out, the Prime did miss that we were not supplying the connection hardware even though I made sure to point this out during the pre-construction meeting. The supervisor decided to improvise. My co-worker was present for this interaction. He knows that changes to structural parts cannot be changed without approval. So he came to find me. After hearing what's happening, I come over to speak with the supervisor. My co-worker informed me that you don't have the connection hardware. What are you planning on doing here? He explains to me his solution was to replace a rod with a rod that he had on site. Basically, he wanted to replace a very high grade structural steel rod with a smaller diameter non-structural piece. Yeah, that is not going to work. What would you know about it? Well, the plans clearly state what is to be used, not to mention, he interrupts me. This is why I hate newbies. Yes, he literally called me a newbie, which is insulting, even if true. They just don't understand that sometimes things change, and that isn't an issue. Well, this is not structural con- It doesn't matter if it's structural. I've been doing this for 20 years, and I know what I'm talking about. He faced my co-worker. This will work, right? I couldn't believe someone who has been in construction for 20 years would say something so ridiculous. I think we should go with what the engineer says. That is excessive. And the engineer will sign off of it. This is when I realized he did not remember who I am. And to be fair, it is excessive, but that is how everything is designed. Safety factors are there for a reason, people. I'm going to need you to stop work until the correct materials can be obtained. This set him over the edge. He started swearing and berating me. After about a minute of this, I'm done and tell him I will be calling the project manager and will stop the work. Like hell you will. He calls the manager before I get the chance and berates me more over the phone and insults my company for sending someone who doesn't know what they are talking about. Apparently the manager doesn't remember who I am either. And the supervisor is finally told to come to the job trailer and the two of them will call my company's structural engineer about the change. I sit back and wait, knowing that he will not sign off of this. He hates having his time wasted and sets them back to me. He told me to get the contact information for the design engineer from you, and we will discuss the issue with them. This confirmed that they forgot who I am. Seeing what my structural engineer did, I said, sure, I have his business card right here. Mind if I sit in on the phone call? 
He couldn't really refuse, so we walked back to the job trailer. The look on his face when they called the cell number on my card and I answered, this is my legal name. What can I help you with? Was what all of the abuse that he had been giving me for the last week. I got an apology from the manager and I'm fairly certain that the supervisor was chewed out badly as he refused to make eye contact with me and was very sheepish for the remainder of the install. We ended up supplying the hardware needed at a massive upcharge and finished the project on time. And just to clarify, I had been introduced to the manager as the design engineer at the kickoff meeting and to the pair of them at the pre-con meeting. The last story is called, you know the owner? I worked at a high-end mall. Specifically, outrageously priced loose leaf tea. I met the owner of the business through my old basketball coach. She married an aspiring businessman who got rich because of his smart investments. Well, one of these investments was his tea shop. We sold a variety of best quality loose leaf tea from around the world. Although it was mostly just retail, we also made rings for about $5 to $8, depending on the size of the cup. Part of our marketing is by going to other stores and offering them free tea. Since we had a lot of leftovers from the samples we used someday, towards the end of the day, we transferred them in cups and gave them out for free to neighboring stores. This gave us more customers and the employees are usually very grateful. Well, except this one rude lady. She worked at one of the big stores. She struts in one day and began to complain how her department never got the tea. She rambles on and on about how they always get it every Tuesday. She doesn't understand why it's so hard for us to be consistent. I know you guys always bring us tea, but we didn't get it today. Yeah, those were just a courtesy from the owner. I know. So why didn't you bring us teas today? I don't understand why that's so hard to do. It's just tea. Um, these teas are actually about $12 per 2 ounces. They are not cheap and we are not allowed to just give them out for free. Well, I know the owner. She always gives me free teas. I want to speak to the manager. You don't know anything. We pay for these teas at the end of the month and I don't see why you're breaking that contract. She was grasping at things at this point. Actually, I am the manager. I know everything that happens with the store. We do not sign those type of contracts. We give out free tea as a courtesy. It's not mandatory. And from now on, I think it's in our best interest to no longer give your store free tea. She realizes she ruined it for everyone and says, You can't do that. I know the owner. My boss actually was in the back at this time. She slides the door open and walks out to look the rude lady in the eyes. Finally, a grown up. Can you tell this kid to stop impersonating a manager and being so rude? Actually, that's my store manager. And I've never met you in my whole life. I think it's best for you to leave. I later on had to relay what happened to my other coworkers and they couldn't stop laughing. I guess me looking like a teenager doesn't make me look credible to be the manager. That was honestly one of the reasons why we stopped giving tea out for free. People got too demanding. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like and please leave a comment with your favorite subreddit for future video ideas. Have a great day. Bye bye.